Hello, this is Sound Out here, and welcome back to the Sound Out 12 10,000 Subscriber Special Part 2. Today, we're taking a look at the top 10 cell phone morphers. Cell phone morphers are a very common type in uh, Power Rangers as well as Super Sentai, and come in multiple different varieties. So, I'm going to be comparing my top five favorites from the cell phone category. As always, my personal opinion, my list. If you disagree, let me know in the comments below what you think is better than any of the picks I picked. Some of these will be based on how they're used in show, some will be based on the toy. Without further ado, let's begin. Number five is the Growl Phone from Power Rangers Wild Force. Now this is a unique morpher. Uh, first up is the first cell phone morpher to be used for the entire team. That's right, within Power Rangers and within Super Sentai. We had one cell phone morpher before this. This started the trend, it seemed. Uh, and this is a cool one. Like, I really do like this. Um, this, of course, is the Power Rangers Wild Force release of this. Uh, the Japanese release allowed you to swap out different animal heads and had a few other moving parts for its various modes. Uh, but overall, it's a cool little morpher. I, I really, as a kid, I enjoyed it because I was like, oh, look, it's a toy cell phone, but it's also a morpher. Uh, so that's got kind of like that aspect to it. You know, very simple keypad kind of stuff, uh, very neat, I like the sticker up top a lot. Um, but, you know, let's turn the sound effects on before we go any further. Um, so turning it on, flip it open, we got a call button, an end call button. Uh, you've also got a generic dial tone, and then the morph button. So that's cool, but what makes this really special? Well. Uh, you see I got the lion head there? Well, that's because if you pull these parts down, you get a transformation ability, unless your leg is completely broken on that one side, in which case, I'm just going to uh, make do. So you get this, like, lion mode, and this is really cool because you get kind of like an action figure feature. So, in the series itself, when they do the morphing call, their morphers transform into their animals, and then their Morphers turn into the Rangers, and then the Rangers become the Rangers. It's a really cool little sequence. Uh, on the G phone for for uh, Hyakuji Sentai Gao Ranger, you would get the alternate, the other four heads for the other animals, and there was little wing parts that could pop out to be shark fins or wings or whatever. Uh, this one's strictly just lion. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and switch it into the Ranger mode, uh, which is actually pretty cool. It's kind of like you get an action figure within a morpher, and yeah. Okay, look, it's not the greatest thing because it is like a cell phone turning into a ranger, but this definitely looks like better than those cell phone rangers they almost released for Power Rangers 2010, so, you know, take what we can get. But it's cool, he's got a lot of joints just because of the nature of folding things up. Um, he does look really incredibly weird. I think it works better, you know, as a concept in series. It looks cool, it's like, oh, look, you know, the cell phone flew forward, turned into an animal, turned into the ranger, and now it's the ranger. Um, but overall, it's neat. It's just neat. I, I do, I do like it. It's it's a very unique uh, feature to this morpher, to morphers in general. Uh, nothing else has done something like this since, probably for good reason. Cause it's not that effective. Uh, but as a kid, I did really enjoy that tactile sensation of being able to switch it into a figure, but then also be you know the thing is too is I think what I liked about it as a kid is I could play around with a ranger action figure, um, but I could take it outdoors because. It wasn't like the other action figures where I'd have to, like, you know, put them in my pocket. This thing, like, would fit in a pocket because of how small it is. So, it was kind of like a portable action figure. Plus, I really like lions. So, there's that, too. But, overall, Growl Phone, not the greatest thing in the world. Not the best. Uh, this one's more of a nostalgia spot. I think number five on these lists is typically nostalgia spots. But, I really do like it, overall. Wild Access. Ha! Number four is the Robomorpher from Power Rangers Megaforce, represented here by the Tenso Sentai Go Sager, Leon Cellular. Now, this is a cool morpher that doesn't actually get used as a typical morpher in series. So what I mean is that this is a morpher by name and by function, as it does morph Robo Knight from his Robo Knight form to his Zord form, but it doesn't turn a human into Robo Knight, uh, which is kind of different than others, but it is still considered a morpher. And I still really like it. Uh, this is something that I know a lot of people may not like this because of how big it is. It is a massive brick. 
Um, I, by the way, I do have the American toy. It's like tiny and doesn't do a whole lot. And once I got this, I kind of forgot where I put the American one. But anyways, uh, this is really cool. It, you know, it works with the weapon. That's why there's like a sliding mechanic. You can attach it to the uh, his, his Robo Blaster. But it's really cool because it's a cell phone, but it's like a different take on a cell phone. First up, you can fold it out, you know, like this. It can also tilt like this. It's a targeting reticle for the uh, blaster, like I said. And you get a really cool keypad. Now, in the series itself, uh, sometimes we'll see this thing floating in the midst of space as he's in his lion head mode, or he'll be using it. Uh, you've turned on you know, that function. The whole idea here is that it all works on a series of codes, which is also cool because unlike the um, the Megaforce Gosei Morpher, where you need the cards to activate the sounds, here all you gotta do is slide the card in, it gives you the code, so you need the card, and then you can punch it in. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the Bravo Morpher toy from Power Rangers Mega Force did not have there's also that sound. Did not have any distinctive sounds, but you could put cards in the top of it. Um, I do like how the cards fit in here. Robo Morpher, they were you know the Morpher was much smaller, so the cards didn't really fit. But these fit right there. Uh, of course, you want to turn them into his uh, Zord header form. Got that going, you know. Of course, summon his, you know, auxiliary zords, the uh, the Lion Brothers. And I screwed up the code. Gotcha. Uh, two six two. Gotcha. And then, of course, his Megazord. I'm just using these cards because I have the cards, but you don't actually need them. Come on, go say grand. Gotcha. And then, of course, the combination for the team, which is. So it's really cool, and I'm, I'm really sad. Also, I love how you can see the code through the, the gotcha. visor like that. Um, it's really cool, and I'm really sad the American toy didn't have this functionality of just, like, an infinite number of codes you could put in. Because uh, it does, like, amp up this, I think, even over the Gosei Morpher. Because the Gosei Morpher, you actually have to have the physical cards. Uh, with the Robo Morpher, you can just put in the codes if you know what the codes are. Uh, there's plenty of code lists online for the Gosager version and there's all kinds of different things inside of it which is really cool and I, I do like that I love it and just like I think with the Astro Morpher I love it when Morphers have that kind of you know infinite code thing like you can put in whatever number you want and you could access something special Robo Knight Morph Robo Knight Morph Number three is the Legendary Morpher from Power Rangers Super Mega Force uh, I actually brought out both for this just because I love the design of this Morpher but I don't particularly love every aspect of either toy, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So I've, I've kind of brought out the uh, group here. So why do I love this Morpher? Well, for one, it's a really cool uh, design. Now, the Japanese version of this has a very deep well for the keys, and it's really unwieldy and hard to, to hold. It's got like this just big thing always there. But I do like... Well, everybody fell over now. Okay. Um, but I do like how you can kind of like, you know, it's got more of a tactile sensation. It's just sturdier. But I do like how small the Legendary Morpher toy is and how much more manageable it is. That being said, uh, this has a limited number of sounds. This has a lot of cool sounds. So you kind of get 50-50. Uh, your mileage may vary. As you see, Ranger Keys are the goal here. Uh, of course, the difference between these two is staggering. Um... But overall, I do love the Ranger Key gimmick. Uh, this is, you know, it's one of the reasons why I'm on here, I think, is just the Ranger Keys. You get access to all the Power Rangers powers if you have the different keys. And it's a cool gimmick. You get these little figures to represent Ranger, and he gives it in powers. Uh, the part I didn't like about the Japanese ones is you have to manually flip them all the time. I did like with the American ones, you just put the little arms up, and you just, you know, do that, and now you have a key. And then, of course, I didn't like the QR codes on the Rangers. Yeah, that was cool. The app was kind of cool when you could scan these in. Um, but I do like the look of these, so again, can't really win either way. 
Um, for example, here, this is a fully functional keypad. With an infinite number of codes. And then this one uh, just has... This one's also incredibly quiet. Um, but, you know, this function here... Really cool, really awesome. This also has backup sounds. And then over here you get not as much springy, just this top part instead of the whole cross swords. This still just makes the same sounds, but you can turn the key a second time. I think the next time you do it, Super Mega Force again. So you get that kind of idea, which I think is kind of cool. Um, they're very similar, but very, you know, they are their own things. I love this one because it's got all the Power Rangers team names in it. This has all the Sentai, so they are vastly different in that regard. It's not just like, oh, here's a different sound effect because it's the Sentai. Uh, you know, it has different team names in it, which is cool. So it's kind of like I like both. Um, but overall, I love the, just the very simple tactile feeling of key turn, thing happens, sounds happen. Um, overall, I think my biggest letdown with both of them is that there's really no difference if you have other colored keys of the same team. So, you know, that's how it works. But I do like those cancel buttons. So overall, this kind of became a mess, but Legendary Morpher, it's number three. It's really cool, but yeah, it's not my favorite cell phone morpher. In fact, there's a couple more ahead of it. Super Mega Mode. Number two is the Digimorpher from Power Rangers in Space. This is another great cell phone. It's the first. It's the first one we ever got. Uh, but I love it so much. So first up, much like with the Astromorpher, a ton of sound effects. Uh, this is really nice that you have the codes on the back of the battery cover without having to remove anything. It's just there. So if you're like, oh, what's the codes? Boom. Like that. A mode, B mode, etc. We'll go through that. Uh, but I love, again, tactile sensations. First up, the little extending antenna, you know, very 90s cell phone. I do like it's extendable, so it's like you get it collapsed, but if you're using it, it's like, oh, you know that. And then you push this button on the side, boom. It's like a Matrix phone. It just looks really cool. I love how it springs open. Uh, it's a great, okay, like I said before, tactile sensations, I think, were great, make great morphers, so boom. Just opens up. It looks really nice. Uh, this bottom door still pretty springy, all things considered. Uh, the only downside to the American release is there's no lights up here for the words Mecca, but everything else is intact. So first we'll do the codes. Uh, so coming back here, 259 for his bike. And we'll do 148 for communications. Then we'll do 506 for the call. And then 730 is a chiptune version of the Mega Ranger theme. That's pretty cool. I don't want to play the entire sound, but it does have the entire TV version of the Mega Ranger opening in a nice little chiptune version, which is pretty amazing, especially since it made it to the American toy and didn't get cut. And then on B mode is where you get the morph. And you actually can press any of these three M's or E's or G's, um, but it kind of works better just going straight down. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, it's a great little morpher. Um, I do really like it. It's a good companion piece to the Astro Morpher. It did recently get a Super Sentai Artisan release uh, over in Japan, so keep an eye out for that if that's something that interests you. Um, it's probably going to be cheaper than getting the originals at this point, but that that is just awesome. It's like my favorite thing, and I remember watching in space and seeing Zane do that to morph, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever, or even just to call people, he just would do that. And I was like, that. 
That is just awesome. Um, and I always wanted one, and then I got one. Uh, and it's it's really pretty amazing. I love this thing. First cell phone morpher, but honestly, one of the best. Let's rock it. What could the number one cell phone morpher be? Well, we're narrowing down the options, and it should be kind of obvious at this point, but... The Mystic Morpher from Power Rangers Mystic Force. Here is the Maho Sentai Maji Ranger Maji phone. So I did not get the American release of this. I wasn't into Mystic Force when it aired. I was young. I was ignorant to the fact that Mystic Force actually was really cool. And it's become one of my favorite seasons uh, in years since. Uh, which is actually kind of surprising because I really did not like it at first. But overall, I didn't get the American release, but I finally got my hands on the Japanese one. Uh, and I love this thing. Now, how much do I love the Magi Phone slash Mystic Morpher? Well, I have white and the purple and the American Red Fury Morpher. Um, I have covered my basis here. I've got all the color variants I could. Um, for example, this is what the American one looks like. This is the Fury version. It's the closest thing to the um, Wolf Warrior uh, Morpher, which was seen in the series. That one was much more red. One day I'm going to get one of these and paint it, but one day. Uh, this one has kind of a different function. Uh, you press the button to open the cell phone, and then you flip this up to get the magic wand. Uh, and then the keypad makes the different sounds, which correlate to the sound effects from the show. Actually, they are the proper magic words. I do not have batteries in this right now, so I can't really demonstrate that, uh, as the screw is kind of hard to get out, so I didn't really want to mess with it too much, but... That's essentially how the, the, you know, the Mystic Force release of this Morpher went. So you got that kind of going on. Uh, these two are repaints of this. This one's a straight repaint. This one actually has new sound effects to be Wolzard. But I cannot reasonably put this or this on the Morpher list instead of this. Because this was only ever used in... Uh, Maji Ranger, as Udana just used her snow staff to morph in the series. I love the way this looks, and I would love to put this one on just because I like the colors more, but uh, I can't because she never used it in Power Rangers, so I'm still showing it. I just can't put it on the list officially. And then the same thing with the Uzaphone, uh, which is Korag's uh, morpher. He didn't use it as a morpher. Uh, he used it. He used it to cast spells. He didn't use it as a morpher, uh, so I can't put it on here. Um, and of course I can't put this on here because this technically isn't accurate. So, now we're down to this one. I do still love this one. I just like the purple and the white a little bit more. Um, this is miles better than the, you know, Solaris Knight's Solar Morpher, uh, but oof, I love this thing. So, first up, nice compact cell phone design. Looks like a normal cell phone of the era. Turn it on, get a little sound effect, flip it open, which looks really nice. And press the button, you get the magic wand. Uh, really cool stuff. First up, let's close the wand and do the call function. A little light in the back. There's a cancel button. You get all those sounds, and you get a lot of cool, like, designs. I love how the keypad isn't a keypad. For example, on the Mystic Morpher, specific buttons. Here, more sensitive touchpad. I, I like that a lot. Um, you also notice that there is a keypad here. I leave this one here. Again, playing into the I love this on Morphers, it has swappable cards. So the default is red, naturally. He's the focus of the show in both countries. Um, he's just, he's red. Um, or I should say both versions, not both countries. But you can swap it to green, no problem. You can swap it to pink, also no problem. I love... They're cardboard, which means, you know, they're not... I wish they were plastic chips, but the cardboard works too. Because if you notice, say for example, compared to Maji Mothers, uh, you notice how this just looks natural. This also looks natural. They don't look like this is a raised piece on top of it. This just looks part of the design, which I love. I love it. 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 Um, it just... It looks so good. Like, here's blue. Just slide it in. Boom. Blue. And yellow. So it is cover over red, so red's the default in case you lose all of them. Uh, and then also I love that they give you a cheater here because they don't list the codes anywhere like the Astromorpher and Digimorpher do, but they live you, let you have the you know, morph, like the morph, 
the Zord and the Megazord one, I think. Um, so let's do the codes. We've got 206. So it's Juma Maji Majiro. Uh, 107, I think, is the Mecha. No, that's an attack. No, wait. 107 is the Mecha. 206 is the, um, is the, uh, Mecha. And then 1205 is... You know what would help if I put 106 instead of 107? Or 207? Maji Maji Majiro is the morphing call. It's going Mr. Ranger and uh, Mystic Force, but uh, yeah, it's 106. See, it looks like a 2 when they put it like that, but 106 is the main here. 1, 2, 3 on Mystic Force. Uh, but also, you can just do whatever spells you want. Because basically, each number has a word associated with it, so you get whatever you want it to be, uh, which really appreciate so overall really awesome morpher really great stuff i love the design i love how great it feels you can put a phone charm on this one if you really felt like it really great morpher great variants of it as well even the american version is pretty good i absolutely 100 percent say this is the best cell phone morpher of all time and you can disagree with me in the comments below if you so like Magical Source, Mystic Force, Always Mystical Ranger. So I hope you enjoyed this list of the top five cell phone morphers, and I hope that you get to stay tuned for the future parts as we have one more video coming up in the Morpher series. Be sure to hit the like button if you like this video, and let me know in the comments below which morphers you think should have been on this list. And hit the subscribe button to join the 10,000 subscribers of this channel, and thank you to each and every one of you out there. I really appreciate everyone's support over 10 years on YouTube. Also, be sure to check out Hero Club at hero-club.com for all of your Power Rangers news and more, and our title card artist, Ryan Darkclaw 643 on Twitter, at darkclaw 643 You can find social media links for me at the end of the video. And until next time, this is Sanat saying goodbye.